absolutely not. Well, man, it's great to meet you. And I'd like to begin our conversation before we get to your life as an entrepreneur. Sure. We're coming up on the four year anniversary of this pandemic. Mm -hmm. How did you get through the pandemic and how did it subsequently change you? Yeah, so for us, um, well, we just looked at it as a big opportunity for our organization. And uh, a couple of strategies we had earlier was number one in the very beginning was about safety, making sure we took care of everybody. But then once it became clear, we worked really hard to get everybody back in person as fast as possible. Within two months, we had everybody back in the organization, back in, an, in the office and working together as a team. So that we, and that year of the pandemic, probably after the first couple of months, I, that following 12 months, I did the most travel I ever did in my life. So we were like, hey, well, everybody else is going to be taking it easy and having excuses for why they should just be kind of just trying to survive it. We're, we were going to thrive through it. Yeah. So for us, it was, you know, we made a big opportunity out of it. And I hear that a lot. I hear that there were a lot of people out there that that really I guess that's the entrepreneurial mindset. Yeah, you exactly. Just, you know, you grabbed onto it and made something out of it. Yeah, you know, the, the entrepreneurial mindset is not the middle class mindset. And the middle class mindset is you're basically programmed what to think, how to think, as opposed to like a, an entrepreneurial mindset. You know, we think for ourselves and we're not going to be programmed because we're challenging all that. And to be, and frankly, if you want to be super successful, you got to ignore basically everything you're to almost everything you're teaching you in the school systems and the media and everything, because if you follow that blueprint, yeah. you're going to have an average life and an entrepreneur is not looking for an average life. Yeah, for sure. So let's get to the heart and soul of your life as an entrepreneur. I'm going to put you in front of a bunch of third graders. It's yeah. career day. And okay. one of the kids says, Hey, what do you do for a living? How do you answer that child? I change the trajectory of people's lives and I get to do it through a vehicle known as my business, TRC Electronics. So one of the great things that a business owner gets to do is learn about what the dreams and goals are of the people that work in the business. And my specialty is understanding that and helping them accomplish those dreams and goals. What did you want to be in the third grade? What was your dream? Uh, be, a, be an entrepreneur. <laughs> okay. So it's always... so. Take me back to where you were born and raised and what were the seeds in your upbringing that grew into being an entrepreneur? Sure. Uh, so I grew up in uh, middle class, New Jersey, but my grandfather was an entrepreneur, custom kit, uh, cabinet uh, maker. And then my dad started uh, the business that I currently own in 1982, uh, the electronics business. Uh, we sell electronic components to manufacturers. So growing up, I had the entrepreneurial influence in my family, and we talked a lot about business. Uh, we talked a lot about impacting people's lives. We we talked about money. We talked about improving the lives of our families from generation to generation and build on that. So that was something that always was so interesting because it was building something for me. Yeah. So... How did it begin? Like, what what was the first? Did did you take over the business? How did all of this kind of steamroll into today? Yeah, it's kind of interesting. I wouldn't recommend this path, but when I was twelve years old, I can remember sitting at the dinner table, my parents talk and grandparents talking about, "Hey, you're going to run Dad's business one day," <laughs> uh, you know. So they were kind of writing a script for me, but um, and I wouldn't recommend that. But I knew that okay, I'm going to own a business. And whether it was that one or, or another one, I was going to be the, uh, the leader because I wanted to lead. And I never wanted anyone to put any limitations on my success and my accomplishments. I wanted to be able to, like, I didn't want to be limited. And so yeah, when, I, um, when I was in high school, my dad said, hey, if you really want to work in a business, go get an electrical engineering degree because all our, you know, the clients are electrical engineers. So I went to school for electrical engineering I held part-time jobs in other uh, industries and also worked for my dad part-time. And then first job out of college was coming in my dad's company as an electrical, a sales engineer, basically. Yeah. So who's been a hero and inspiration for you in your life? Well, the first one's my dad. Yeah. So, my, you know, my dad was tough on me. And, uh, but my dad also was successful in business. You know, he started up a business at that time. It was only a couple million dollars, but for them, it was a big accomplishment. It was exceeded their goals and expectations. So I learned a lot from him. Um, I learned work ethic from my, from my dad. And I so grateful of that. And it's something he, he, um, 
he, all of us in the family learn that from him. And, you know, you want to pass along, when you pass along generational wealth, if you can pass along work ethic, that is so friggin' valuable because so many people lack it and feel so entitled. Yeah. Uh, and then working with him the first several years, I watched him a lot. I shadowed him a lot, learned a lot from him. So who's your favorite entrepreneur? What's your favorite American success story? Huh. So... I have a lot of them, but I would have to pick one of my mentors. So Brandon Dawson, who's partnered with Grant Cardone, and uh, they co-founded Cardone Ventures together. Uh, that was somebody that I found four years ago. Uh, I was looking for somebody that was going to be aligned with, with what I was looking to accomplish, not only from business, but also how can I impact people's lives, make sure the people in my organization are coming along for the ride. And uh, so I would say Brandon Dawson, he's uh, been really impactful for me. And that turned into like, hey, I'm looking for this unicorn. I'm never going to find this person to putting it out in the world, attracting this person, becoming a friend, not only a mentor and coach, but a friend, a partner. And now I'm working for him because I mastered all his material and now I'm leading one of his programs. So if you can meet anybody on the planet right now that you find inspirational or fascinating, who would that be? Who would you love to meet and talk to? Yeah, it would have to be Elon Musk because he's yeah. such a you know, you think about, he doesn't have the middle-class mindset. You know, that guy is really thinking for himself and um, he's so innovative and so courageous. He really is. And uh, I would just love to have sit in a room with him for, and just pick his brain and learn from him. I'd probably be so intimidated because the guy is just so, he's just so above everybody else. Yeah. So let me ask you this. Every day you wake up, what's your motivation to do your job well to help entrepreneurs and to ultimately evolve as yourself. Yeah, you know, when once you start making money, in the beginning, it, be, it becomes a lot about money and it's a little selfish, at least it was for me in the beginning. And, you, and that's important, it's super important. Money is, is uh, critical to success. But then you realize that that is not what it's all about because you start picking up on the, the wins and when you feel the most fulfilled, you realize it's when you're helping other people. When you see somebody that previously doubted themselves or lack confidence in your and you're helping them grow and develop and their belief is, become, is increasing and now all of a sudden they're becoming a better example for their families and their communities and for other people in the organization. So when I wake up knowing that I'm going to impact other people's lives, that's what drives me because there's never that's never enough. There's always more. There's always more, more people that you can impact. And in addition to that, um, I would just say that, um, you know, when I think about impacting people's lives, uh, you, it's not, it's not self-serving, you know, you're not doing it just for you. And for me, like, what can I do that takes more courage and I can be a better example, do something bigger and better, uh, like something that, wow, like, I can't believe you just did that. So I can be an example for what's possible for other people, because I'm just pretty ordinary guy, except for my mindset. And that's what everybody needs to understand. So what's been one of your favorite client success stories? Uh, one of my favorite client success stories. Let's see here. All right. So one of them, um, one of our clients, so we sell to manufacturers in the uh, electronics industry. One of those, there's many segments in, in the industries. One of them is LED lighting. Uh, about five years ago, we worked with a lighting company that was redesigning the uh, New Year's ball. Uh, in Times Square, and we provided them with uh, engineering resources and also the uh, LED drivers, which power the lighting of that New Year's Eve ball. So for us to see them successfully like meet the project demands, uh, the, the deadlines that were pretty tough, and we were able to support them with that and make sure that was a win and then turn on the TV and watch the New Year's Eve ball drop. I mean, that really is as good as it gets for us. Oh yeah, for sure. So of all of these things that you've done in your life so far, you, what, what are you the proudest of? Uh, the dad that I've become. Yeah. And the interesting thing, so I have, I have three daughters, nine, nine year old twins and a 12 year old. And um, I've invested a lot in my life in leadership development. That's a true passion of mine. And the interesting thing is when you invest in yourself to develop yourself and you might initially be doing it because you're trying to improve your professional success, more than half the benefit of it ends up uh, benefiting you personally with your, your friends and your family. And you know when you, your most important leadership job you'll ever have if you're a parent 
is being a parent. Yeah. And, uh, you know, what I'm most proud of is the type of dad I become and how I'm leading my kids. And, and they're really, they think big, they are resilient, they're courageous. They don't, they're not afraid to, to have big goals. And, um, and I also don't force any of this on them. They just, you, when you're leading leadership's not, a, it's like a rope. You don't push, you pull and yeah. they, and it, they just come along for the ride. That's still probably the, my big proudest accomplishment. So do you think they're going to become entrepreneurs? Do you have a gut feeling that they're going to Ooh, um, they might, you know, that's the thing. Like I learned my parents, uh, made a mistake and they paint, they kind of paint, painted my destiny for me. Yeah. We'll do that for them. I'm going to let them determine it. And, um, there's three of them. So is at least one of them likely to, I would say probably just like math probability says yes, yeah. but I don't want to project anything on them. I want it to be what they want it to be. So speaking of youth, let's say you have a dream tonight. You run to the 20-year-old version of you. You can give that young version of you a piece of advice based on the wisdom you've gained in your life so yeah. far. What advice would you impart on that young version of you? Yeah, I think the I think the biggest thing that we lack when we come, there's two things. There's two components of it. One is when I graduated college. I mean, I didn't graduate college, so I was like 23. But back then you you have this mindset when you're done with school, you're done with learning and now I'm ready to work and now I'm going to just work. And I, what I learned quickly, number one was learning is a never ending process. And as fast as you can learn, you know, that's an investment in yourself that no one could ever take away from you. And you're, and you're always going to have that. And it's going to create you so much confidence because you're going to know the person you're developing into it. You're, you're capable so much more. You're so powerful. And then, um, it's about confidence. So we, you know, our belief limits all of us. So we're only the higher we believe, the higher we can achieve. And when we're younger, we don't have as high a belief as we we limit our, ourselves by what we what we believe we can do. And if I had somebody like the older version of me saying like, think bigger, keep thinking bigger, ignore everybody that tells you you have enough or that's too big. Ignore everybody that tells you you don't want to disappoint yourself. Those are the people you need to distance in your life. You need to get around people that are going to encourage you to be have big, audacious goals and really go for it. And anybody that's super successful, that's what they're doing and they're ignoring and separating themselves from anybody that doubts them. Yeah. What's been the best advice you've ever gotten? <sighs> best advice I've ever gotten. It's a good question. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll start with this everybody's got an opinion. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, my best advice I ever received from somebody was be, do not take advice from everybody. You want to, who's giving you the advice and have they accomplished what you're looking to accomplish because yeah. if they have it, they just have an opinion and it's not qualified. So only take advice from somebody that has accomplished what you're looking to accomplish because everybody's going to give you a piece of advice and yeah. especially when you're not asking for it. For sure. So everyone out there has a perception of you, family, friends, clients, colleagues, but you run the show. What's your perception of you? Who do you think you are? Hmm. So the first, I, my perception is that I don't run a show. It, my perception is that I'm, I lead the team Yeah. and they run the show. So um, my, and I think that they would agree with this. I'm pretty, I'm very confident of it actually that uh look he's a leader and he leads by example so if he says he's going to do something you could be damn sure he's going to do it he's totally 100 percent committed to not only his own, own success but everybody that's on his team whether that's family employees business clients uh to, uh family friends everybody uh that he's a true leader that that's the perception and you lead by example you have to set the example you got to lead yourself first if you don't lead yourself you cannot qualify to lead anyone else and just like taking advice from people you can't lead other people if you can't lead yourself yeah. so if you can't do it for yourself then how are you qualified to lead somebody else yeah well just like we were saying about your your kids like your example of what you're doing for yourself is going to just absolutely come out by osmosis and they're going to, they're going to feel it, which, which is a yeah. good chain reaction. Yeah. And you know, I, you know, I like my mindset of parenting is very different than what most women of class. I hear people like, Oh, I got to be home with my kids. I want to be home at five o'clock. I want to be there from five 30 to like when they go to bed at nine 30. And honestly, 
because you're setting a shitty example for your kids. Because yeah. number one, you're just sitting around doing nothing. And you're not out in this world making things happen, doing something big where there's, wow, dad, mom, I can't believe you're doing this. Now, like you have this family dynamic between like a, the two parents, you got to have roles and responsibilities. It's hard for both of them to be doing this all the time, but you got to figure this out. So you got to be out there and growing and developing because when you grow and develop, you're the lid of your, your children. They see you as the hero. Like you're as good as it gets until they get older. Yeah. And Whatever you are is what they think is possible. And if you think that getting home 5.30 every day and sit on the couch and then spend the whole weekend doing nothing just because you're, quote, home, that that's going to be a great example. It's not. Because then the, but you, when you do have time with them, you, you, you're very intentional about the time and it's super quality and they watch you and they see what you're doing and they're inspired. And, and then they start thinking you're a superhero. And now all of a sudden they're like, okay, what am I going to do in my life? Yeah, absolutely. So let me ask you, Stephen, if anyone wants to reach out, learn more about your company, anything about your world, what's the good business? Where can they go? Well, my uh, if they want to reach me um, on Instagram at Steve A. Lags, uh, that's the best way to find me on social media. Uh, my business is trcelectronics.com, uh, and we're an electronic wholesale distributor that uh, sells components to manufacturers in the United States. Right on. Hey, this has been great, man. Thank you for your story. Thank you for your time. And Keep on enjoying Kansas City's barbecue. I will. I'll look you up when I get out there. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Hey.